Rivals has arrived, and now it's time to go to that great rivalry between the Utes from Utah and the Cougars from BYU. Huh? Yeah, I know. It's a little early for that in the season it's there, never, Scotty. It's never too early for that, Alex. And we want to talk specifically about a recent uh, transfer of uh, Francis Bernard, who was a great linebacker at BYU. It didn't quite fit in for him. He has to sit out a year. And now he has officially joined the University of Utah football team. You ran over a lot of... You, you, you sort of, you gracefully ran over a lot of information in the, in the Francis Bernard story that hurts a lot of BYU people's feelings and goes straight. Well, I wasn't trying to hurt feelings because there's Harvey no, Longy. I know. He started, no, no, out, he started saying, out at Utah and then he went to BYU. The reason it hurts feelings is tell, because tell me why, it, was a, it was an awkward situation why he ended up leaving Provo. I mean, when you think, I think a lot of people heard the, the recording that ended up happening between he and the Provo police down at his apartment down there. Um... It was not a good situation, and I've said this before to you. Sometimes BYU will let you know when it's time for you to be done there, and sometimes you make the choice, and, and in this case, it was a little bit of both, and I think Francis Bernard fits in better at the University of Utah. He really does. And if you're a Utah fan, uh, and this has come from the guy who, who wanted to see Francis Bernard succeed more at BYU because he's a massive talent. Now, they have a huge they, – they just have a uh, – they just have this boon of talent now at linebacker at Utah, and I'm a little jealous of it if I'm a BYU fan. So, so I upset you by this. No, no, I think it's okay. great. All right. I just, I, I'm glad so that he's finding a spot because this could be the tailspin that I think a lot of college football athletes go into sometimes where they're like, I didn't fit in at that place that I committed to, and then they just go into a, they, they, they commit one uh, you know, thing that gets them kicked out of school to another thing that gets them down a, another bad path to another thing. And I think finding a guy like Kyle Whittingham who will put his arm around players and be like, hey, I'm going to expect a lot out of you and you're going to bust your tail and we're going to make you a really good football player. And I, I have all the confidence in the world that that Witt will get him to that NFL, you know, yeah. prospect and, that he is. And, and there is, you know, young men make decisions and I don't, I don't disagree with what you said. Uh, Francis Bernard made certain decisions that weren't wise and, and got him in trouble. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's part of the deal. Uh, and it wasn't a good fit for him at BYU for whatever reason. And But what, what is nice is that there actually is a place for him to go. And Kyle Whittingham has, has had a, a good history with giving guys these second chances. And actually, um, they've done well. Mo most of them have actually... Uh, fostered and he's not easy on him. He's like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna stoop to where you are. You're gonna rise to the level that we're Look, on. And there's no, he takes no BS from anyone, and and he'll be gone if it's a if it's a bad situation. Francis Bernard is easy sledding compared to some of the other guys who he's had on his roster before. No question. You think about Darren Carrington last year coming from Oregon with the, uh, you know, having been dismissed from the team for DUI, and and there were some people who criticized him for even taking him as a grad transfer. But you know what? He was minding his P's and Q's while he was here. This is a guy, Kyle Whittingham, who's got a couple of guys on his roster right now who are significant contributors who, uh, were, who were involved in a shooting on campus uh, and, and had to deal with injuries from a shooting on campus. Coach has to do, and coaches at the Division One level have to deal with this, even if you're not at a really, really high-profile program. But Kyle Whittingham finds really great recruits, and sometimes with really great recruits come really big problems. <laughs> yeah, you're you're always gonna have you're always gonna have issues as a head coach, and you know, I mean, you take a look at Urban Meyer, and Urban Meyer has had some rather high profile and quite uh, dramatic players. You know, Aaron Hernandez was a former player of his who ended up uh, actually going to prison for for murdering someone. So. Uh, you know, it's pretty dramatic, and, and he had issues when he was uh, obviously at uh, Florida. But I, I, I think I think Coach Whittingham, because there's this whole win at all costs mentality with most coach, and and the coaches at Utah and the coaches at BYU, they're they're competitive. They they yeah. want to win. But I think there's also a sense of decency, and and an opportunity to to have some compassion on certain players. You know, a lot of these programs they just say, look, we don't need you. Yeah. We're going to pass on you. We we don't we don't care. Um, it's just well, it's just not worth the headache to you, us. You do the other thing too where and this has happened in the past and I, I think that Bronco Mendenhall had a little bit of this. He'd hold a grudge if you didn't work out or if you did break rules and didn't weren't a part of the team or if it wasn't working out for you at BYU and you wanted to transfer, that was a hard deal. I mean, look what Joe Tukuafu had to go through to come out to get out of Utah State's commitment. I mean, not released by his coach up there. And and I think that Kalani Sataki, to his credit, when guys see that it's not working out, he makes sure and says, look, I want to do what's best for you. If you want to go to Utah, 
our blessing with you. I and mean, we want yeah. you to succeed. They want these kids to succeed. And, you know, I think only the real boneheaded people on, uh, on sure. either side of the rivalry are the ones who end up uh, being vocally well, there, weird there, about there are, this. Some, there are some coaches that actually won't let you transfer in conferences and all that. They're, yeah. try, they're, they're trying to eliminate that because I agree. If you, don't, if you don't fit in, you don't fit in and, and move but on. But these are adults. And and let them make their in, in most cases. Well, I who mean, are the adults? The coaches or the players? Both. And why don't we? Why don't <laughs> are you sure act this like is it? college football? I don't but know see, how why, adult it is. But see, <laughs> but why can't the coaches treat this twenty-one-year-old guy like he's twenty-one and say because they're competitive? And I I that, get the that, com- that, I get the competitive part, but I, I like having the vision of going. You're going to live further than this time that you play for our team here in this place and. I want him to. I want him to succeed. And Life's I, too I, short. I want Francis Bernard to be drafted in the second round out of Utah. I, Why has it got to be the second round? Why can't he be a first rounder? Because you know how all those divas are. Those those quarterbacks, and there's always like a those diva left tackles that want to get taken early in the draft. No, I just assume like he's so. So quarter, quarter, quarterbacks and offensive linemen take up the majority of the same. first round. I'm just saying, I'm giving him a high draft stock. Can you please? All right, second round. Respect okay. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully he'll get a chance to play this year, and uh, and next year he has two years of eligibility. All right, Rivals has arrived. Now it's time to go. You can text Rivals to 65537. Go to those social sites in the corner. Be social. Dial us in on your phone. Until then, we'll catch you soon. And thank you very much, Alex, for joining us. You bet.